Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today, presented by Snickers. There you see it. It's time now for the trade conversation based on Dave Richards' trade chart. You check out the trade chart on CBSSports.com. Dave gives you a point system that can help make trades. It's a great tool to help you with some of the moves you should be making to enhance your roster in a different way aside from the waiver wire. So let's talk about some buy low and sell high candidates here, Dave. And the first buy low candidate that we have is Justin Herbert. Expected to get his receivers back hopefully for this week with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. He's been miserable without those guys. How good will he be rest of season if those guys are healthy? Should be back to being in that top 10, maybe even top 5 conversation at quarterback. He's going to be exciting to watch because the Chargers put the ball in the air so much. They're literally one-tenth of one percentage point behind the Tampa Bay Bucks in pass rate on the season. And keep in mind that Herbert's still been throwing the ball quite a bit without Mike Williams and without Keenan Allen. Now they're back in the schedule, Jamie. They've got the Chiefs. The Cardinals, the Raiders, the Dolphins, the Titans, the Colts, the Rams. A lot of games where they're going to have to keep throwing, and Justin Herbert's going to have to put up points. I think he's the guy to go target if you don't want to overpay for Justin Fields, Tua Tungavaloa, or Lamar Jackson. If you have Justin Herbert, though, are you selling him? I would not like to sell him at all. I, I think he's probably, like, I was just thinking in my head, I wonder what type of starter I could get in addition to Justin Herbert if I traded away Justin Fields, because I think Justin Herbert might be just as good as Justin Fields the rest of the way. Hopefully that's the case because it's been very frustrating for a guy that we were drafting as a top three quarterback this season. But the a absences at the wide receiver spot have certainly hurt him. And he may even get those guys back but lose Gerald Everett who's dealing with a groin injury. Next guy that we're looking at here from a buy low standpoint, Dave, is Mike Evans. You're expecting him coming off of a bye week to be good. This is always a good situation whenever you get to teams that are on a bye, especially teams that are fighting for the playoffs. Give them something to help them during the bye week, and you get Mike Evans for the rest of the And season. how many people are going to be desperate for receiver help this week because so many good wide receivers are on bye. So if you're not in that boat, you can easily trade a receiver that's a little bit worse than Mike Evans in exchange for Evans himself. And he's been gross the last two games, under 10 PPR points in each. But does anybody really believe that Tampa Bay is about to run the ball as much as it did last week? Maybe. Really? You <laughs> Maybe. Do? I mean, they found I a guy. Know. They found a guy. They found a guy in Rashad White, and I do like Rashad White, and his trade chart value is actually higher than Leonard Fournette's right now. So if you're looking for a white or a running back to chase, Rashad White's that guy. But I think right now Mike Evans' value is at its lowest point maybe in two years. I think you try and take advantage of it on the bye week after two bad games. I think he's going to come through with a lot of double-digit target games, just like he had in the three games before Week 10. It's, it's such an interesting thing because Mike Evans, for the two years prior to this, had basically been Adam Thielen, right around 1,000 yards, a ton of touchdowns. Please scoring. don't disrespect Mike Evans. Score, score, well, they, they've been almost <laughs> the same guy. They just score a bunch of touchdowns, not a lot of yards. And this year, the touchdowns have pretty much disappeared. He's got three on the year. The yards are actually better this year than they've been in years past. The targets were better because Godwin wasn't himself. I, I think there's some risk if Godwin is actually moving towards being himself, that if Evans doesn't score touchdowns, he's going to be disappointing. The, the one counter to that would be is that Godwin may open up some things for Evans. Mm -hmm. And if Brady's just starting to get multiple touchdowns going, it's not like we're going to see Evans continue to get right. shut out. So no. I think but sure, they're going to run the ball with Rashad White 25 times. Well, I don't know if they're going to run it 25 times, but they found a run game. And so yeah. a run game is yeah. going to maybe go from Brady going eight games in a row with 40 pass attempts to now he starts to get into the 30-35 range, which would clearly hurt all these guys if they're just running the ball with a little bit more success, which I'm sure is what Todd Bowles wants and what Tom Brady probably needs to get mm -hmm. them where they want to get to. Right. Uh, in terms of the sell-high candidates, Dave, you got Justin Fields as a sell-high candidate. We got a tweet in regards to this, just a question in regards to what you should be giving up to try and trade away or trying to get back in return for trading Justin Fields. So Brett wants to know he's got uh, Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, and Jalen Hurts as quarterbacks in a 2QB league. Do I hold them in case of injury or trade one? And which one would you trade? I think the I would try and shop all three. I would hope that you would get the most for Fields just because he's been so ridiculous. Hurts is the one that I think is going to be best rest of season, and you're not going to get as much for Lamar Jackson in trade. So see what you can get for Justin Fields. I'm not saying that this is as good as it's getting, and you should sell high on him. In fact, I think we should have the conversation. What would you take and trade for Justin Fields? Heath, you mentioned trying to get Justin Herbert and something else for Justin Fields. I, I'm not opposed to something like that because he's been so good. I don't think he can keep up 100 rush yards a game. I do think he's going to have a safe floor of maybe 20 fantasy points per game with some upside matchups along the way. So if I've got Justin Fields and another quarterback, I'm not just going to give Justin Fields away. I want to hang on to him so other teams can't use him against me. But if another team desperate for a quarterback. Well, you're calling him a sell-high candidate. What are you I'm trying not to calling him a sell-high candidate. I'm saying we should talk about him being a sell-high oh, okay. candidate. And I think that it's worth selling high on him if you get the right kind of offer. Who would I take for him? I would take a stud running back like Mixon, 
Aaron Jones. I think Josh Jacobs will be close. Mark Andrews will be close. But I'm not sure if anybody's going to give me those types of names for Fields. So in that case, I'm just going to hang on to him. I'm just going to say it. He is a sell high candidate. But two weeks ago, we talked about how this the stretch coming up for him was so fantastic, and he was starting to like himself. This is as good as it's going to get. He scored 91 fantasy points in the last two weeks. Nobody does that. So I think like we worry about you trade Justin Fields away. What if I have to see him in the playoffs? Well, if you see him in round one of the playoffs, he's facing the Eagles. If you see him in round two of the playoffs, he's, he facing, may run all over he's the facing the Bears. He so may I, run all over the Eagles. Yeah, or the Bills. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'm okay trading away. I do think he's a sell high. I think he's probably QB7-ish for the rest of the season. Next guy we're talking about here is C.D. Lamb. Dave coming off just an absolute monster game for Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. And for fantasy managers, we had two touchdowns and just was an absolute star. Why are we getting rid of this guy? I think because he's coming off of his best game ever. Another player that you see what you can but get But look at the receiver landscape, though. Why would you get rid of him? Because you might be able to get a receiver that's a little bit worse and a player along with him, or a receiver that might be better than him. What if you can turn him into Jamar Chase, somebody who's a little bit impatient? You sell uh, high on CD you gotta, Lamb, you got you to you hope the, that Jamar you Chase be comes right back and is himself. That, though, because of how Chase and that, we don't know when he's coming back. I also think the schedule is going to be a little bit tricky for him. Three of his next four games are against defenses ranked in the top five and fewest fantasy points. He's coming off. I kind of like that, though. Why? Because they're going to throw more. Yeah, but this is a Cowboys offense that loves to spread the ball around. Heath talks about it all the time, and they don't mind they running and being balanced. Though. They couldn't last week. What's changing? Their matchups are going to be a little bit harder moving forward. And I, mean, I don't know. Listen, he's coming off his best game ever. It's only the sixth not, time I'm in his not, career. I'm not selling It's CD only Lamb. the sixth time in his career with over 100 yards. Only his fifth multi touchdown you got to give me game. Justin Jefferson for CD Lamb at this point. That's no, the only way I'm of doing. course no one's going to do that. you got to give me Stephon Diggs for CD Lamb at this point. Would you, would you take Aaron Jones for him? No. No. He's my wide receiver five this week. There's four guys. I would take Diggs. I'd take Jefferson. I'd take Hopkins. I'd take Adams. Uh, yeah, maybe. A.J. Brown? No. Nope. Terry McLaurin and Jeff Wilson? No. No. Not even close. You guys love yourself, C.D. Lamb. He's good. <laughs> I mean, of this course is guy he's good. As a top five <laughs> but receiver. he's going to be a top and five receiver rest of the season? He, he might be. He might I'm going to sell Cooper, on that. Cooper Cup's going. Right. I mean, look at the receivers right now. We don't know when Chase is coming back. Juju might not play. Who knows what's going to happen with the quarterback situation in Arizona? Are you going to trust Colt McCoy to keep DeAndre Hopkins at that level? I'm not. I'll take Dak Prescott's top guy based on what we've seen.